Hello you beautiful souls and welcome back to another video. When drawing portraits or faces in general, one of the hardest challenges is to get the facial expressions right. Starting out, I struggled quite a bit to give my characters some sort of emotional expression, let alone to actually draw up the expression that I originally had in mind. I would either have some blank stares that conveyed little to no emotion at all, or really exaggerated emotions that simply were all over the place. If I had to describe my art now or the art of the last two to three years, I would say my drawings have a rather soft look to them. I really like subtle expressions. Yet keep in mind that subtle does not mean that they lack expression. I also want to say that I know that going for a subtle look takes a lot of practice and it's not really a beginner friendly technique because it really takes fine details and they need to be on point. But let me tell you how I got to this point and how you can simplify that a bit. To make this tutorial a little bit easier to demonstrate and for you to follow along, let's switch to a more cartoonish and comic-esque style. Why is it easier to show you with comic or cartoon drawings? In this style, features are more exaggerated and everything will look a bit more obvious. Of course, you can always modify that to your own drawings and your own style. At first, we have to look at the key features that are responsible for expressing any kind of emotion. Those features are, of course, the eyes, the eyebrows also play a big deal, and the mouth. I would say that the eyes and eyebrows are a bit more expressive than the mouth, but in combination, those three are absolutely powerful to convey any sort of emotion. If you're thinking back after two years of a pandemic, we all have learned to read emotions by just seeing the eyes of people, but if you have the mouth, in addition to that, it just makes stuff easier. So let's go through them one after another. The eyebrows are actually pretty simple. Really, they can have one of three positions. That would be neutral, turned upwards, or downwards. If you have a hard time identifying how different emotions affect the eyebrows, I recommend that you make yourself a little bit of a cheat sheet, where you loosely sketch out the eyebrows and their positions and write down the corresponding emotions. I always keep one of those close by because it just saves a lot of time and it's really handy. The same, of course, works for the mouth. While there's a lot of different expressions a face might have, it might be a little bit easier to, you know, just narrow it down a little. I categorize the facial expressions in closed mouth and open mouth expressions. An example for a closed mouth expression would be, you know, either have it really neutral or have a positive one like smiling or happy, or a negative example would be disappointed or sad. Examples for an open mouth emotion, again, could be something neutral or something like angry, yelling, or just bursting out laughing. Again, I recommend make yourself that little reference sheet. It does save a lot of time. Now to the most important part, the eyes. In order for emotions to look really realistic, and it doesn't matter if it's in a cartoon or comic character or a realistically drawn figure, the eyes need to interact with the eyebrows and the mouth. Take for example a person that is grinning from one ear to the other. The corner of the mouth are pulled up which will affect the cheeks. The cheeks also pull up a little bit and this in return will affect the eyes. Hence, the lower eyelids will be pushed up as well. With this expression, the eyebrows are pulled up as well, so there will be more space between the eyebrows and the lower eyelids, which might even be curved upwards.
Let's take a look at a negative emotion. Someone who is angry will have their eyebrows furred and coming down. This will affect the upper eyelids, which will be pushed down. If on top of that the person is yelling, because they are so angry they just cannot hold it in any longer, meaning the mouth is open, that will also lower the eyelids as well. Another really good example of an expression is fear. Fear or disbelief are shown by raised eyebrows and wide open eyes. Whether the mouth is open or closed is totally up to you, but both eyes and eyebrows will take up much more space than they would if they were in a neutral position. Obviously there is a lot of variation and in-betweens and every character has their own additional little features, for example dimples or whatever you can think of, but if you draw an expression sheet with the most common emotions and keep it as a reference, you should already have a really solid base when it comes to drawing emotions. It's easier to go for exaggerated emotions when starting out because once you have some practice with it, you can just, you know, play around with it a little. And you can also adapt and change it to whatever style you're working with. And if you want to make it a bit more subtle, then you can of course do that as well. Another little hack and actually one of the best and easiest tricks you can do to help yourself draw expressions is to keep a little mirror close to your drawing place. Try the emotions for yourself and watch yourself closely. It might feel really weird at first, but it's actually a common use technique, especially in the field of classic animation. I know it looks funny, but it really, really helps a lot. Something that you might be experiencing when drawing emotions, and I actually think that's really funny, is when you're drawing a certain emotion, you might unconsciously find yourself mimicking the same expression as you're drawing without noticing. It happens to me quite a lot that I find myself drawing a piece that's showing a certain emotion and my eyebrows are furred or I make the same expression in general as my drawing does and every time I think it's hilarious. So yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly made a lot of funny faces while drawing those examples for you and I had a lot of fun making those. Let me know if you liked the video and if you would like to see more drawing tutorials and art related content of course. Maybe even consider subscribing and I will see you next week. Have a great day and see you soon.